We are live. Well, good morning for everyone in our part of the world today, in Australia and that part of the planet. And good evening to everyone who is in the US and the other side of the planet. I am excited to bring to you another graduate of the J. Shelley Certification School. Today, I am having with me Luke Fenwick, and Luke is a life impact coach. And I am really excited to welcome you, Luke, today. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hello, everybody around the world. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. It's um, you know 11 o'clock over here in Melbourne, and yeah, pumped. You know, can't wait to see where we go with this. <laughs> but that, but thank you so much for having me. Like, yeah, honestly, thank you so much for having me. It's that's a good opportunity. Um, hello, Preeti, how are you? Yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity to sit down and, and have a chat. So you know, thank you so much. Grateful for your time, Luke, and really excited to dive in. I see some of your colleagues, some of your students are already tuning in to say hello and to support you. Oh. This is really heartwarming. It means that you definitely created, you know, a strong presence and reputation in the student community, which is absolutely fantastic. And Luke, shall we start with a little bit of a background story about when did it all start when you suddenly had a desire or a thought to become a coach? How did it appear in your life? Yeah, yeah, great question. It's a bit of a long answer, so, you know, go with me for a minute. Um, I'd been really fortunate over my kind of work career, my corporate career, to work in amazing organisations for the last, you know, 15 or 20 years. I'd, you know, I had worked for LVMH, you know, part of, you know, Martin Chandon, all those big brands. I'd worked in professional sports at Melbourne United here, you know, so I'd been really fortunate to do these great things. And then, you know, started to have this, this reflection on to what my life was becoming and how I was as a, a dad and a husband and a person. And I started to have this kind of reflection on I wasn't doing everything I could to, to be everything, right? So, and this was a big realisation when I was looking at my boy and going like, how do I do more to create this amazing place for him as he continues to grow up. So I know that's a long answer to where you were kind of going, but then that led to this whole piece on, you know, how do I make as much impact as I can on as many people as I can? And that's where the whole life coaching thing came in. So it started with this big purpose, but it was absolutely about about my wife and about my son and, and about being the best I can. Like that, That's what it was about. And how you are feeling today? Do you feel you are on the way to there? Yeah, yeah, like, you know, I, I'm not going to give the answer of, you know, everything's fantastic and I'm perfect and I'm, and I'm finished because that's, that's not what it's about. And it's certainly, certainly one of the things that I learned as a coach and I think it was something that I was struggling with in my work career is I always looked at myself as being, you know, I'm, I've got to be perfect and this has got to be on path and this has got to be on track and, you know, and that, that was it. And I didn't really look at the the journey to get anywhere. And all of a sudden now, like these are the things that I've really reflected on. Like, you know, we are we're never perfect at any particular stage. But the importance is is how do you realize where you're at and how you want to keep on growing and how are you present in these moments? Um, you know, it's okay to fail and all those kinds of things. Like I, I was learning all of this along the way and it was really really powerful for me so i continue to try and be a better dad and a better husband every day um you know and some days you know we've just had two months worth of lockdown where i've had my boy at home he's you know he's 27 months so we've had you know two months of him being at home all day every day and i haven't had spent that much face-to-face -face time with anyone ever other than you know my mum when i was a little boy so, you know, you go on this journey about trying to, you know, just figure things out and, and just improve and realise where you need to make those improvements. So it's been a really powerful journey to get here with such a long way to go. So 
fantastic answer. I love hearing and, you know, I love learning your story, Luke, because I think it is really inspiring, you know, to me to hear what you are doing, you know, as a father while trying to change, uh, you know, completely the course of what you have been doing previously is really inspiring and motivating. And I'd like to ask you here, becoming a coach and going through this journey, you know, of complete shift in what you were doing, do you feel it helped you navigate through life changes that you are going through yeah like it, it's like when you're doing when you're doing the course and you know for me i was getting up at you know 6 30 a.m every morning and i was working through to like six o'clock every night like that that was part of my my journey and so you're doing the course and you know there's this massive part around like awareness and goals so you're doing a lot of um, reflection along the way and you know i was i wrote you know, journals full of stuff. So you absolutely just keep on exploring, exploring. So it really helped me while I was looking at from a coaching perspective or a course perspective as a student, you're all of a sudden, like you have to wake up to yourself, right? Like, you know, that that's part of it too. You can't expect to be an amazing life coach, person, dad, husband, if you're not aware of all of these things, you know, you need to keep on improving on every day. So for me, it was, there was a lot of realisation. There was certainly, you know, some moments in the morning, I kind of get up in the gym and, you know, get on the exercise bike and do training. And I've got, you know, massive big sticky note walls, uh, you know, paper all over the wall. So you're in there and you're just writing stuff and, you know, it's just coming out of you. And then you're sitting there reading it as you're growing and exploring and having your downs as well as your ups and you just have some amazing realizations along the way so it's it's been really powerful to have that structure of that journey to learn and expand love that thank you so much for explaining that and i really like how you you know put it in a way of mapping you know explaining how that fit into your new schedule absolutely fantastic to hear and look if we are looking now at the choice of your niche because within the program you could be any kind of coach that you wanted to be right you could pick to work with anyone and help them in any direction why did you choose your specific niche what was the motivation behind it yeah yeah like a great great question and that's certainly something i've like i've spent a lot of time exploring right so you know i look at myself as a life impact coach and certainly for me, I, I'm talking to people or want to want to talk to people that are sitting there and having that kind of moment of, you know, is this what my life is all about? Um, and it doesn't always necessarily have to be this, you know, massive big epiphany that we're going through, right? But sometimes we just start to have these realisations on, you know, is this as, as good as I can make it? You know, how do I be a, a better person, you know? And that can be from... You know, relationships or career or you know you're you know being a father or fitness like it's all kinds of different things so for me it's you know how do I create impact on people's lives and certainly it's for people that are looking to create you know an amazing legacy so when I talk about legacy it's not the end of it kind of you know life and death piece but legacy is the story so the story that you're creating over your journey, you know, are you satisfied with the story that you're creating? And I wasn't. I was not happy. I was not satisfied. I was saying, I'm going to do some great things and have some brilliant experiences and, you know, earn, you know, money, all this kind of stuff. But I wasn't satisfied with the story I was creating and I didn't want to get to, you know, 60, 70, 80, you know, whatever it is and look back and say, you know, I'm not happy with the story. So for me, that's my niche. You know, I want to talk to people that aren't happy with the story that they're creating and I want to support them to create impact in their lives so they can create the story that they want to, that they want to have. I love when you said I help people, you know, who are not happy with the story that they are creating. I think that is really powerful. And I also think that I met at least a thousand people, I think, over the last few months who came, you know, and spoke to me and they said exactly that. I'm not happy where I'm going and I have no idea how did I end up here because I did not imagine my life to be at this point of time, you know, at, at this stage. And look, I want to ask you a more narrowed question here since this is your niche. At which point do we end up, you know, in a situation when we feel trapped 
we feel in a corner, you know, and why usually that occurs when we are actually achieving the goals that we were setting when we were five, 10 years younger, where is that disconnect? Yeah, look, I think it's a really good question and there's there's a lot of complexity to this and, and what I'm finding is there's a lot of parts to this. So I hope that I explained in the right way. There's a group of people that kind of go through life and all of a sudden things go absolutely pear-shaped. They go sideways and they have these massive big realisations on like how did I get here and where did where did it go, all go wrong, right? Like that's that's one kind of group of people and they don't see it coming and that's when a lot of anxiety and stress and all of these things kind of happen. And that's something that I think anybody should really avoid as best they can because, you know, that's a world of hurt really. But it also gives you this amazing awakening and the opportunity to kind of sit down with yourself and start to explore your thoughts and what you're creating. So there's the other part to it, which I was going to say, is the people that actually, you know, are on board with, I suppose, the journey that they're having, take the time to reflect. You know, they might do journaling. They might just have people that they're really close to that they can talk about their story. They're the ones also that have that realisation of because they're it's out in the open, right? So they're sharing it, they're talking about it, they're saying, I'm not satisfied with what's happening in my life, like what do you think? And then they start to bounce that idea. So the ones that are aware of what's going on as part of their story find maybe it's a little bit more peaceful some of the transitions that they look to do when they they make this change versus the people that have probably just been ignoring that that feeling in their gut right like and we've all had that from time to time where we have that you know agitation in our stomach and we ignore it we ignore it for you know two years five years ten years until it becomes something really serious and that that agitation in your stomach is is you know your soul and the universe you know trying to tell you that something's not right something's not aligned so you need to explore these things so you know that that's a massive part of it as well is just having that awareness and that honesty with yourself about you know what's going on in here and the honesty with like I want to create this I want to do these things um and being really honest that sometimes that's difficult but if you want it enough, then you'll make the changes and, you know, start to put it into action. I love that answer, Luke. And, uh, you know, the more I talk to you, and I think Luke feels it in the comments, the more I talk to you, the more I realize that probably the amount of things and events that you have been through, you know, and your desire to help people now combined with your expertise definitely brings you to this point when you are able to explain, you know, and put order into the minds of clients. I can totally see this already coming, you know, and I have a question here from one of our most frequent listeners who never misses even one broadcast from us. <laughs> our star, Yuvara Jan, and he has a question for you. And I also resonate with his question a lot because I have been through this myself. Uh, I don't know if I found the answer yet or not personally, so I'm really curious to hear your opinion. Yuvara Jan is asking, what if we do achieve our goals, which we said earlier, and yet we don't feel fulfilled? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think it's a really important to kind of explore there's two parts of this again. Sorry, I keep on coming over with these different answers. Like I think, I think it's it's important to have the joy of the journey getting to these goals, right? And I think that's where a lot of people fall down because they go, they set, and I certainly did that myself, right? It was about set this goal, get to it, okay, not satisfied, get to the next one, you know, not satisfied, and then you keep on pushing. And you know, part of ambition is great, right? But, you know, you nearly need to talk about enjoying that journey to your goals. Like that's where the satisfaction and the beauty comes along, right? Is that is that rigor, the pain, you know, the, the challenges to actually get there? Like that's where the real satisfying part gets to. And then if you get there at the end of it and you're looking at your goal and saying, well, you know, I'm still not satisfied, like then that's where that reflection piece comes in, right? Well, why am I not satisfied? Like, was it the wrong goal? Like, have some of my, you know, values or my purpose changed in life? And that happens too, right? Like, you know, we're not set. You know, what happens tomorrow for me is not set in stone right now, 
okay and it's certainly not set in stone for five years down the track so sometimes we need to do this reevaluation piece i set out with this goal in mind and i'm here now why am i not satisfied with it has something happened along the way is it not as fulfilling you know as i thought it would be like why are these particular reasons but anytime we're doing goals i always say absolutely fall in love with the process to get to your goal because that's where that's where the beauty and the love comes in I'm not I sure if that, but hopefully it did. <laughs> Great question. For me, it did, and I'm sure you, Rajan, also got tons of value from that answer. And I think you really um, explained one really important point, which resonated at least personally with me again, and that was, did your purpose change? Because I think when we set the goals and the timelines, what we do not count is that what's important for us at the point when we set the goal may be not as important to us by the time we reach that goal because our unconscious which is including our beliefs and values may actually change along the way and sometimes that process is what makes us change isn't it yeah like a hundred percent like and that's that's kind of also the journey that led to me being the life coach stuff right so originally when i was really young that was you know, a lot of people in their careers, it's about how do you get like the next promotion or how do you get the next pay rise or like, like there's a lot of that stuff. And then, you know, I went through a different, you know, kind of journey, got to the point where I was in at the basketball club and that was around the purpose was, you know, doing amazing things for the families that you see at the games, you know, how do you bring the sport back? So there was that whole purpose piece and those things kind of changed along the way. And then it got to the point, as I was saying at the start with the life coaching piece, it was, you know, how do I impact on, you know, son, wife and everybody? How do I create the best world around me that I can? How do I do more? Like that was, that's when all these purposes change. And that's okay, right? Like, you know, don't, sit there if you're feeling that there needs to be changes and go i'm just going to to stick with this so you need to have that reflection piece to say well is this for me now and you know you also need to be truthful to yourself right because sometimes we do set goals that aren't healthy goals right and then you know we might create ha habits that aren't healthy so that's where that whole reflection piece is so so important for you to be able to dig in and go well is this good for me in the long long run? Like, is this helping what I really want to do? Is this is this tying into the values that I want to represent? If you're doing something and your values are about giving and love and sharing and passion, but all of a sudden you're doing a whole heap of things that don't represent those values, then chances are you might need to make some change and, and reflect and, and maybe head in a different direction. I love that explanation, Luke, absolutely. Brilliant. And I see that our audience also resonates with that. Look, I know that there are two types of coaches that I meet all the time. And it's not only limited to the graduates and students of our school. Some coaches believe that everyone is coachable, that they yes. can help anyone and any person. And yes. other people believe that in order for them to help a client, the client needs to be coachable or the client needs to have a certain set of design attributes and qualities. I'm curious about you. What do you believe and who do you work or not work with? Oh, oh my, what a question. Um, so let me think about this. I, I think you certainly need to be open to the coaching experience, right? And you know, we can come up with like our place as a coach is certainly not to say to someone that you need to do this or, you know, we're not there to be a mentor and say that you should be like us. And, you know, we're not a, you know, we're not being used to do the work. So for me, people need to be open to the process, like their abilities, um, their ability to, you know, just go on that journey to be open, to share you know, to explore their beliefs on where they are right now is really, really important. I personally think that if someone is open to exploring their beliefs, because I, my take is that if you can handle your beliefs and you can look at them and you can change your beliefs, then you can do anything in life. Um, if you want to stick with where you are and just stay on those beliefs, then, you know, you're kind of going to be boxed in. So I think I can coach anybody as long as they're willing to open up, explore, you know, look at their beliefs, maybe change them and, and be really open. But um, it's not easy, right? Like it's it's not easy, especially when you're doing a lot of introspective stuff and you're exploring 
why you are in a particular situation. And you know, I speak to a lot of people that, you know, might be coming to me and they're not in a great position because they've had this kind of angst. So, you know, it's really difficult to explore those things, but it's really, really important because that's where that's where that kind of magical stuff happens. When you're really true to yourself and you're willing to be open with a coach or, you know, or friends sometimes to explore and kind of go from there, if that makes sense. Makes absolute sense, perfect sense. And then tell us what kind of results can someone expect after working with you and how to actually get them there? I'm sure a lot of people watching us, maybe or on replay, will want to contact you and maybe work with you. Maybe you can explain a little bit how does that look like? Yeah, like it's, it's a really, really good question. And, and, you know, shout out to all the coaches that are out there, right? Like, you know, people want to be coaches, life coaches, because they want to do amazing things and, and they want to do good. So, you know, well done to everybody that's wanting to do that. Um, you know, a lot of us have had, you know, the opportunity to, you know, do the course and to learn and to have that kind of structure as well. But I think what makes me different and where I can really help people is the journey that I've been on over, you know, over 20 years. So as I was saying, you know, 15,000 hours worth of just face to face, I'm working with people and trying to get the best out of them in that kind of career you know i've had this amazing journey now of self-realization in you know how do i create a fulfilling life how do i make you know an amazing life that i really want to be satisfied for on so many different levels and then how do i put all of that into you know into a structure and how do i explore my beliefs and how do i then you know break some of those bad habits so to answer your question you know where i think i can add value to people is that my thing is how do i create impact in someone's life so how do i get you really really granularly in understanding what your beliefs are at the core how do you figure out really where you want to get to and then how do we get you on that journey? So there's the strategy that I've learned in the coaching, but then there's also this stuff that I'm doing now, which is great, like really starting to explore the science behind the brain and how that works and all the chemical reactions and all that stuff as well. So there's stuff from my heart and what I've done, um, you know, my professional career, the coaching that I've done now and all the scientific stuff that I'm learning along the way as well. So I feel I've got a you know, a really balanced approach to, to get results for people. And, and that's what it's all about, right? Like it's it's not for me. It's about how do I get someone to where they want to get to. Love it, Luke. Thank you so much. I think it brings a lot of clarity to anyone who may be looking for a life impact coach. And I'm sure there are many people who do. Questions from the audience. For example, yeah. Andy Hong is asking, how do you balance patience and love for yourself with being disciplined and progressing. How do you balance patience and love for yourself with being disciplined and progressing? How do you balance patience? I'm sorry to be repeating this back, but that's such a, it's such an awesome question. So I want to make sure that I, I get into this properly. So balance and love. Like, I think that's, like, you've got to dedicate time to it, right? Like, you know, that conversation that you have in your own mind is really, really important. Um, and patience, like I know it says balance and patience, but for me, patience was something I really wanted to learn and explore because traditionally I wasn't a very patient person. I was always about, you know, next, 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 next. So for me, it's about making sure that I dedicate time to these things. So making sure as part of my routine, I have like you know, my fitness routine, which starts at 6.30 in the morning. So I do that for, you know, a good hour. But then it's also making sure that I've got time to, you know, dedicate to just making sure that I'm in a really, really good headspace. Um, before I get out of bed every morning, I spend about four or five minutes just visualising and kind of talking to myself on what my day is going to be like and the qualities and values that I want to represent. And a lot of that's around being patient, kind, giving loving, nurturing, and present. So that's how I start my day. And then, you know, I make sure I spend another part of the day just kind of writing and journaling as well. And then you also need to make sure that you're dedicating the other part to when you might be, you know, you're studying or you're doing something around your health. So it's, it is a long answer, but it's about dedicating time and making sure that you stick to that. Because if it's difficult for you to do some of those things, your mind is probably immediately going to be looking for ways to actually not do it and to try and get out of it. So it's it's important just to make sure that you stick to that routine and, and have it set. Love that, Luke. Routine 
and habits that's basically the pillar of that satisfaction and fulfillment at the personal level absolutely love how you tied it up together and yeah. question pretty what yeah. you enjoy and see yourself doing more of is it one-on-one -on -one coaching is it group is it programs or is it more of public speaking yeah gr great question thank you so um like when I originally started, it was all about like the one-on-one -on -one opportunity and how do I, you know, create impact for people one-on-one. -on -one. And then we had this, um, we had a day here in Australia called Are You OK Day, you know, which is around, you know, mental health and, you know, just asking that question of friends or colleagues or whatnot. So that ended up being, I did a whole heap of online presentations to a hot, you know, a number of different businesses. There was about a thousand people I connected with over the course of those few days. So. I really loved that, and so that was absolutely fantastic to do. So to answer the question, my heart is that I want to impact as many people as I can. Like my goal is to impact a million lives by 2025. So one-on-one -on -one coaching is going to be part of, but certainly that whole, you know, group coaching online, like I love it, you know, as I continue to, you know, form and become more confident and, you know, continue to learn, then, you know, hopefully I do more group speaking and, you know, presentations to people and whatnot as well. But, um, yeah. Thank you, Luke. Absolutely love that. And I also think that if you can impact as many people as you can, it's a sin to hide that from the world. You definitely should. And uh, Jim Young is asking the next question, and that is, how did you figure out the niche is? Yeah, great, great question. Um, there's a bit to this one, so stick with me. So picture, I'm in the garage one morning, I'm doing my workout and I'm starting to, to write all of, you know, where I wanted to go and how I wanted to impact. And I had this realisation that a big part of what I wanted to do was dawn of legacy, right? So it was around how do people realise what they want their legacy to be. And Dawn was my mum's middle name. You know, mum passed away a few years ago. So it was a big honour to her to do this Dawn of Legacy piece. So my niche was about, you know, a bit of my personal history from where I came from in regards to, you know, my legacy and creating everything that I wanted to do. Uh, but it was also how do I, how do I do that with other people? How do I help them create this legacy and it was a massive nod to to my mum you know i think it was about five o'clock in the morning or something like that i was in there and, and it just came to me this dawn of legacy piece and and then it just started to evolve from there and here we are so that, that's that's kind of how it happened um, a bit of personal stuff a bit of mum stuff and um and you know just wanting to help as many people as i can create that that legacy in that life I love that story when you were speaking. I was imagining you in that garage and all the boards, you know, next to you and you writing all this stuff. This is really, really powerful. And I'm yeah. really mom is not with us. Uh, it's a pity. But uh, I really admire, you know, the way that uh, you keep her in your thoughts even while, you know, deciding on your coaching niche. I think that has a very strong connection. Yeah, th thank you. The the garage doesn't look too much like a beautiful gym by any stretch of the imagination. It's kind of kind of been thrown together, but it serves a purpose, right? Like it's about getting in there and and you know starting the day well and and doing you know some healthy fitness stuff. And then it's also it's also about exploring you know what's going on in my mind. Um, so you know it's yeah it's been been quite the journey in the gym in the you know over these last you know over this last year. I would love to follow you on social media just to see, you know, the video of that garage now because I think it makes us also. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have to do it. I'll have to get some photos in there, and I won't clean it up. I promise I won't. I won't do the social media clean up the garage and make it look professional. But uh, it serves a purpose, and it's it's been a good place to to explore. So I love that. Really, really nice. Julie is asking, um, what is your favorite? areas to coach and why i think that's a great question yeah 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 so it is a really really good question where most people seem to be talking to me at the moment is you know uh, and what seems to be resonating is certainly around kind of that the family the relationships you know whether or not it's husband wife kids you know that whole piece um there's a, been a little bit with career but it, it's definitely more of that that away from work health, life, family, relationships. 
So I'm really loving that. Um, and that seems to be what's you know resonating with people at the moment more than anything else. Absolutely love that. And also I think that the area that you help people with is applicable literally to anyone because again, I still cannot crack the code of the explanation, you know, to this, but the more time passes, <clears throat> the more you keep hearing from people, I am not satisfied. I still feel, you know, that everything is not yet there where it should be. So I think what you are doing is absolutely much needed, finding that satisfaction, finding yeah. that is the key. Yeah, like it's it's hard, right? Like we're, we live in a world and a society where there's, there's so much stuff coming at us at the moment, right? Like and social media is a massive part of this. And, you know, a big danger is that we're always looking you know, at what someone else is doing and we don't spend a lot of time internally. But, you know, it's a really important part just to to, to be looking at yourself, you know, because this is where it all comes from. It doesn't come from anywhere else, you know, internal validation, satisfaction, gratitude, like this is what you should be aiming for. Don't look at that from someone else. And when you're exploring those things, then that's when you start to go, well, you know, how do I do more? How do I create more? You know, that, that's where the power kind of comes in and it's why it's important to try and find out, you know, our, our peace in life. I'm really happy you talk about that aspect because, you know, most of the people think of coaching or speak of coaching in terms of coaching will help you reach your goals. And I understand because that's the most appealing side, right? Let's say that's the most sexy side of coaching. But very few people speak about the most important aspect of coaching that you've mentioned and that is self-directed learning or yeah. reflection because i mean okay go it. we all want to achieve something and get there and uh someone to keep us accountable remove the roadblocks but what about that self-directed learning that the coaching brings and that's where the satisfaction can stem from isn't it yeah like you know you you can you can get onto google right now and you can you can search millions, billions, whatever it might be, different techniques to do particular things. And you can read all the textbooks and you can listen to all the podcasts and you can do all that stuff. But until you're ready to do it yourself, until you're ready to make those changes and accept wherever it is right now, and, you know, like that's when stuff happens. So as a coach, like that's that's where the beauty of the coaching part comes in, right? Because, yes, we have the techniques or the experience and the passion and all that, but like we're there to help you kind of unlock that block that might be in that particular spot. And that's kind of what holds people back, like, you know, because we have a lot of realisations, you know, we have hundreds probably every day, but there's often a block in the way that we just don't push through or we don't know how to get around it. And that's kind of what coaches do because, you know, it's there's, there's usually stuff that's built up inside of you over many, many years that's holding you back. And, like, that's what you've got to understand and let go of. Like, it's part of you. you just got to stop coming back to it time and time again if it's not helping you and your purpose and your mission or your vision. Like, whatever you want to refer that piece at, like, that's, that's really important and powerful. And your answer is powerful too. Again, Luke, thank you so much for sharing. Nick probably is asking why are we keeping his question and we keep talking about completely other thing. Nick, we are sorry. Finally, time to answer your question. And Nick is asking, do you feel like such a massive list of things that you need to change or skills that you need to build, mental exercises to do? How do you prioritize what to work on first? Really good question. Single yeah. said about you can Google and find massive amount of the to pick the one for you. Yeah, 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 and, and it is such a great question because quite often we're sitting here saying, "I want to change all of these things in my life." Oh my God, where do I start? And then you start trying to do hundreds of things, and then flash forward further down the track, and you haven't done any of it. Like, and that's and we've all been there and done that, right? Like, and that's okay. So you know. Don't get discouraged. But for me, it's about having that clear roadmap and the plan. So these are the things that are really important to me now, right? And, and sometimes you need to go a little bit deeper because there might be some other things that maybe aren't as important that if you achieve them, it unlocks all of this other part of your life. So my recommendation to anyone is, is that, you know, you need to take the time to explore about what are the things that are going to create the biggest impact in your life. Be really clear on what they are, 
create that plan to get there and put all of your energy into doing that, okay? And it's not about time, right? It's about energy. You can have, you know, a massive amount of time spent on something but not really be giving all of your energy and then go, well, I haven't achieved it. So it's about being crystal clear and granular, like this is what's really important to me. Like this is the number one thing right now that I want to do and I'm going to put all of my energy into it. But have your roadmap um, and kind of, you know, and that's going to be part of that patience, right? Like we're all getting better every day. You know, you're going to be better in a year compared to where you are now if you invest the time and energy into it. So I have that patience. And I was, as I was saying at the start, right, like enjoy that journey. Like, you know, celebrate those kind of wins along the way. It doesn't matter how small it is. Like, you know, enjoy that because that's when the body and the mind starts going, you know, we're on track here, you know, we're doing really good, and then you go on to the next one. But try not to overcomplicate it. Keep it simple. Get your goals ready. Give all your energy into it and then get on that path. Great advice. Nick. That answer, it's a good question. So, Really good question, Nick. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. And colleagues, Alina is curious, which part of the certification school called out to your soul and what resonated with you most? Yeah, so I, I presume this is maybe before I started doing it. So maybe I'll, I'll approach it from that because the, the whole course, like, you know, blew my mind. There was, I can't remember what part it was, but at one stage or another, you had to write a letter and I wrote a letter to mum. Um, and that was kind of like, I'm writing this letter and it was a really amazing experience. So, you know, the whole course was incredible because the awareness it brought to me. But how do I, how did I get to the course is also a really good question. I'm not sure if that's what the question is, but I'll answer it anyway. So I was looking at all different courses that I, I could do and there was a few here in Australia and, it, and I'd reached out to a friend who was also a life coach and he said, speak to another person who was doing Jay's course. So I spoke to him. And then I didn't personally, I'll say this, I'm not sure if it's a good thing or not, I didn't know lots and lots about Jay at that point in time. I'd, like I'd seen bits and pieces, but certainly wasn't aware of like the extent of all the amazing things that he'd done. And then I started to, to explore more about the course, you know, what it was about, what he was about. And what really resonated and called out to me is that, yes, there was this structure into the course, which was great. Yes, there was, you know, Jay talking from his heart and, and you know, all the things that the teachers put in around, you know, you know his, the monk experience for him. But then there was all this other stuff too that, that was just based on, like, there was the scientific thing, you know, research. Like, it was just such a beautifully well-rounded course. There was so much for my mind. There was so much for my heart. And I could see the journey and just, you know, the consuming of his content was fantastic as well. And all the other courses, quite frankly, I just, I didn't, I didn't have that. Like, I just didn't feel that same thing. Like, I didn't, I didn't, there was just this connection that I had watching it all and it just really worked for me. And same before, you know, I was doing from 6.30 in the morning to about 6 o'clock at night every day, you know, kind of watching the videos and, you know, watching some of the replays from the other coaches. And it was just, it was really amazing just to watch the journey everybody was on and, you know, hear all the cool things people were doing. So, um Hopefully that that answers the question a bit, maybe, hopefully. I'm sure it does. And thank you so much, Luke, for all your warm words. It really means a lot to us. We are really happy to hear that you had this great experience. Mala is also asking, what about the biggest challenge you have faced when you were working to the 35 and now as a coach after graduating? Yeah, so that's, that's a good question. There's a heaps of challenges, so maybe I'll try to you know rattle off a few. Like you, you, as in anything in life, you know, when you're trying to create change and do things that aren't where you are right now, there's always that little bit of kind of angst. Am I on the right spot? You know, is this going to be you know a failure? Like all of those things. You know, you you know we hear of all those you know self doubt and whatnot, and that was that was a massive part of it for a small piece, you know, is this the right thing for me? But what I found along the way is then it just had this beautiful natural feel to it as each kind of module I did, you know, as each lesson, as I was writing, as I was reading things, as I was doing stuff in the gym, as I was thinking about Dawn of Legacy and all that, it just had this beautiful feel where all of a sudden I felt connected and right and everything 
all that kind of angst disappeared. So there was that part when I was being certified or trying to do it. And then the biggest challenge now after graduating is, you know, it's it's a business in a degree. You're trying to engage with people and, and you know, in a way that you want to share, like I want to help as many people as I can, right? Like I want to talk to everybody and say, look, you know, how do I help you? But also, like, you know, you're trying to get your messages out there. And that that's a big challenge too because, you know, there's so many people on all the social media platforms, whether or not Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook. So the big challenge is is trying to engage with people. But, like, it's, for me, it's now it's just part of this, this, you know, natural evolution that just feels fantastic. So for me, I'm just focused on trying to do amazing things and have good messages and talk to people from the heart and and the rest of it I'm just letting kind of evolve so I feel like I'm in a really really good spot regarding it again I hope I'm answering these questions like I I really feel like sometimes I might be going a bit far but it's um yeah I, I think you can't overthink things maybe is a good way to look at it you know it's so easy for us in any job right and especially when we're doing things from from the start it's easy to overthink it and kind of get caught in your mind but don't do that like you know look in your heart why are you trying to do this stick to that and just just keep keep evolving and you know keep doing good work and see where it takes you you know nothing's guaranteed anywhere yeah good point i really love that um aspect of explaining that yes there are challenges and they will always be there with any job that you and with any career because any career has pros and cons and coaching is not an exception you know there are cons in teaching there are cons in being a doctor you know there are cons in being a coach too absolutely like that's but that's that's part of like the journey that we're all on right like it's not if it was easy then well like what what would life be like if everything was easy like you'd be bored or like so it is about the challenges and certainly as a coach too like you know you're on this journey with people and often that journey is is not in a straight line and often it's over speed humps or it's around speed hump or it's you know jagging over here and back so you're on this you're on that journey with people that you know you need to be prepared to be to be present and supportive and sharing and guiding and nurturing um, and at times you need to be a little bit firmer because you know someone's trying to get out of it so like it's it's just all part of it so you just you know be present keep going and don't overthink it love it look another question from olga rubio uh, Olga would love to become a life coach. She's passionate, loving, and giving. However, she's asking you: Should she get discouraged if she struggled in a school? Right. So I'm reading this on the screen now. Um, I'm passionate, loving, and giving. Like that's what Olga should be focused on. The whole piece about discouraged if I struggled at school. Don't don't worry about that. Right. So for me, at school, like if I flash back. A long time ago it was not recently but when i was at school and high school like you know i'm such a different person to what i was then like i reflect back now um i wasn't a great student um i, I probably reflect back and say that i probably wasn't like the best person back then i was really trying to find my way so my answer to to you olga is don't worry for a second um about if you struggled at school um if you're passionate loving and giving then like that's what matters the most like that school piece is in your past doesn't matter about what your future is like focus on your future don't get caught up in the other stuff and, and give it a go like you you sound like you are perfect person to be giving coaching and go so 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 just do it just do it see where it takes you thank you for that motivation for olga luke i think that's really important and encouraging for her to hear because in a sense, I think you are a role model to many today because many people in our audience, they want to become coaches, but let's say it's not the right time for them or they are not sure they have what it takes. And I think Olga is a perfect example of that. And one thing that I'd like also to add to you and um, uh, give a piece of advice to Olga, if I may, you know, uh, one of the things that we really underestimate is investigating that process of evolution and change that we all are going through during life for instance if you were doing not really well at school and let's say you have bad grades do not allow that to become your time stamp 
you know, do not allow that to stick to you and do not allow yourself to believe in that and become your conditioning, you know, um, whether you come to our school or not, it doesn't matter. It's all about your mindset moving forward because think about all the opportunities that you may be missing, not with our school in general, with any other learning. Let's say maybe you would make a great lawyer and you had that desire, but because you believe because of grade 10 and you not doing well in grade 10, you always have that barrier unconsciously that, well, I won't do good in lawyer school because I didn't do well in middle school or high school. So Olga, work on that programming, you know, get it out of your mind and just progress to any goal that you set being a coach or being someone else. Do not stop yourself from learning because you will be stealing away from yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, you know, those those beliefs, don't let them hold you back. Like that's just, you know, spot on. Could not agree more. Wonderful what you just said. And Kimberly is having another question for you, and it's about switching careers. Kimberly yes. says, what can you advise to someone who is keeping on switching careers because of failures? In short, confused. So it's it's interesting right because i that was a massive part of what was going on with me i was i was in this in this career big job big organization um but it, it created massive conflict in me and you know it created like you know lots of anxiety and i woke up every morning it's at 4 4 a.m every morning for six months seven months um and i was not in a good spot and it was impacting everything else that was going on in my life and that's when i started to say to me to to me but also i had the conversation with my my wife like you know i need to to make changes because this is not the story this is not what i want the story to be um you know this is not the right place for me you know right for people but not the right place for me so it was a big step for me to me leave that piece of career and then head in a completely completely different way but um you know i spoke to people i got advice from friends um you know spoke to people that mattered the most in regards to my wife you know seek counsel from some really close people and then started to explore further in regards to okay well like what happens from here if i switch careers like why do i really want to do that like what can you know what can my life be like you know how does how does things play out if I actually stay with what I'm doing? Am I going to be satisfied? So I spent a lot of time doing a lot of exploration internally to try and figure out all the reasons on why I wanted to make these changes and, and it went from there. So um, I think, Kimberly, you know, you need to explore because deep down you're the one that can answer these. It's not someone else. Like you need to be prepared to look at, like, how do I make this into a career and what am I prepared to do? I made mention before, like, you know, let's not just get focused on the goal, like sign up for all of the stuff that comes along, you know, all of the challenges, the heartache, the the pain, the stress, the tears, the joy, like sign up for all of those things to get you to the point on where you want to go first. But, um, you know, that's that's my answer. It's, it's a lot of internal kind of exploration to do. But it was worth it. Like I don't regret it at all for a second, for one moment that I've walked away from such a big thing to do this now and kind of start from scratch again because it's like it's here. So if that's where it is for you, Kimberly, if it's there, then then go with it. Thank you so much. I really love that answer. And look, I have a final question for you that's going to be from me and not from our um, audience. And yeah. that's going to be, you know, because your niche is all about the impact and all about the legacy, right, and what you're going to be remembered for you as Luke Fenwick one day uh, you also are going to leave this place just like all of us yeah. what would you like people to say about you after you are gone yeah like it's it's such a good question and you've put me on the spot here so look I really you know I want people to to hopefully look at the the life or what I've created and say that I that I have impacted people and i've made change and i've provided people you know the start and the opportunity for them to do amazing things like i i hope at one stage or another you know my boy you know that that's a massive part of it
certainly that's a massive part of why I'm doing this. Like I want him to be proud um, of what I'm trying to do and the changes that I'm making and how I want to impact on on him, you know, be a better dad, you know, better husband and do all of these amazing things. So I hope at the very, very end of it, you know, people can look at it and say, like, you know, Luke did great things for me. He helped me create an amazing life. You know, he's impacted on many people. He's achieved great things. But at the end of the day, he was a really good dad and a really good husband and he was a really good friend. Like that, that's that's kind of what I want to get to at the end of it. Hopefully many, 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 many years down the track. So that, that's the plan. That's the plan. I love that answer and I think it tells us all a lot about who you are as a person what are your priorities uh you know uh, and and this is really inspiring look i would like to thank you for your time and before we start off uh yes. would you like to tell our listeners how to get in touch with you how can they start working with you and who you are looking for at this point of your coaching career to help them with that impact yeah 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 thank you so much for the chance to come on and, and chat like it's been been really cool like certainly nerve-wracking at the start oh, like all oh, kind of questions but you know thank you so much like you know to yourself and all the teachers like i know the hard work you guys do to get the course right and it's also you know the feedback you know that we get along the way so you know thank you so much for everything you do people can contact me or the easiest way is via my website i think it's maybe on the screen somewhere here so it's uh you know lukefenwick.com um that has links to all of my social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. We do a monthly newsletter. There's a new one coming out in about two weeks time focused on careers where we get some experts to come in. So that goes out monthly. Um, I've got a monthly blog. I wrote a blog recently about my time with my little boy, um, which was you know rather incredible. So people can go to the website and connect with me there on all my different kind of platforms as well. Um, who am I looking to connect with? I'm looking to connect for the person that might be, you know, sitting there today or, or know someone that's that's sitting there going, like, my life is not what I want it to be. There's something missing at the moment and I want it to be better um, and I want to find ways to make it better. Um, it could be a guy, it could be a girl. It's not about an age thing. It's about someone saying, I want my life to be more. I want to do more things. I want to be more. I want to give all that kind of stuff. Like they're the people that I want to connect with. Um, so head to the website. Um, there's an, a way to book a, you know, catch up with me. It doesn't cost you anything to do it initially, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm there to I'm there to help, right? Like I'm there to help and chat and, and see how I can, you know, help you in your life. So, you know, I'd love to speak to as many people as possible. But, um, you know, thank you, everybody, for the questions and sitting here and listening to me, hopefully answer the right way and and not rambling on too much. But it's, um, yeah, it's a wonderful journey. So thank you so much for your time. I, I appreciate it. You know, I really do. I really do appreciate everyone's time. Thank you so much. So if you are looking for your life to be more and if you are sitting out there listening to Luke and you are thinking, I would also like to uncover what is the real impact and what is the real legacy that I want to leave behind, I highly recommend that you get in touch with Luke before he gets fully booked, which usually happens after our interviews with those uh, graduates and the discovery calls. So do not forget to go to Luke's website, www.lukefenwick.com. You also see it on your uh, screen right now. If you, uh, for some reason, forgot Luke's website, you can always find him on our website, www.jshadycoaching.com, on our coach platform, and you'll find the link to Luke's website there too. So do not back back, book that discovery session, especially if it doesn't cost you anything uh, in the beginning. If it's a free discovery session, I highly recommend that you do that. Look, I thank you not only for your time, but also for the generous wisdom that you have shared with me and with all the audience. It was such a pleasure and honor to have you with us today. It's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for the questions. And yeah, keep doing amazing things like what you guys are doing to help so many people. Just, I love it. Thank you, everybody. It's, it's, been, it's been good. I've enjoyed it. So thank you. Thank you.
so much, Luke. I hope to see you again soon. And thank you everyone for tuning in evening in the US and uh, the Euro part of the world, as I know, and now also morning in Australia. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And watch out for next week, another interview with the J. Shelley Certification School graduate, as always. Luke, good luck, and I hope to see you again. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.